Welcome back, everyone. WIBG three nine eight ten twenty. The Welcome Home Show. Timmy, you with us? I'm here, Joe. How are you, buddy? Not, not, not bad. I actually love this guy. Timmy's a Marine, Iraq veteran. Timmy, I got to tell you something. You're the mentor, probably the best mentor for veterans courts in the country. You, you travel all over the place. Uh, uh, if you mention veterans court and mentors, uh, Melissa Fitzgerald mentions your name. Uh, how would Judge Dugan have handled a Air Force veteran over 20 years, security in the Air Force, trained as a sniper? He now, he now raises service dogs for veterans. He gave them away free. Uh, he was a sheriff in Delaware County. He comes to New Jersey, and they arrest him because he has a handgun with him. He's got, his record is so clean that if it wasn't all his medals on his record, he wouldn't have a record. And he's going to be back for his third or fourth time for a trial. And they're going to send this Air Force security veteran with 10 years of service as a sheriff in Delaware to a pretrial intervention for a year to learn the safety of a weapon. Now, is that asinine? It absolutely is. Uh, That doesn't make any sense to me, that's for sure. After Judge Dugan Um, got done thanking this veteran, do you think he would have carted him off to jail? Absolutely not. Um, That's the beauty of uh, Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. Uh, We have veterans courts. I know know Jersey is starting, um, but they need to... uh, put it in fifth gear and really get going. When Jersey starts something, they think they got to go backwards for 50 years and then they come forward. Yeah. Really. Seems but that way, Joe. You got a memorial coming. You work for the great Judge Dugan, don't you? I do. He's Greatest judge great in man. the country. Greatest judge because guess what? We're in New Jersey. We're our prosecutors here in New Jersey. Our judges here in New Jersey send veterans off to jail. Judge Dugan sends them off to, off to college. Yeah. He does. He definitely uh, helps uh, helps them any way he can. I mean, it's not about uh, scolding them for what they've done. It's about building them back up to the best person that he knows they can be. Uh, he stands by that. The, 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 and, 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 and you know when you come back from, from, from Iraq, Afghanistan, what you have to do. You know, I want, these, the, I want these politicians, they should all be made to watch the movie, Thank You for Your Service. And then maybe they would get hold of what's going on. You know? They prance around these courtrooms, these prosecutors, these bailiff people. They never got sand in their shoes. Probably Unbelievable. Not. Uh, Unbelievable. Most, yeah, most of them should experience some of the things that uh, veterans experience, and then they'd be a little bit more grateful for things. You got an event coming up, correct? We do. March 31st, National Guard Armory, 2700 Southampton Road in Northeast Philadelphia. And you're going to be... Is it, excuse me, it's, it's a beef and beer for um, the Pennsylvania Global War on Terrorism Memorial. Um, currently, there are 288 service members from the state of Pennsylvania who have died fighting the global war on terrorism in either Iraq or Afghanistan. And uh, our goal was to put all of those names on a wall, um, you know, here in Philadelphia, down next to the Vietnam Memorial and the Korean War Memorial. And, and, uh, uh, that's just going to be good. We're going to make that, hopefully we'll make that area a, a memorial site. Uh, Timmy, if somebody wants to make a donation, where can they call into? And by the way, 288, how many from Pennsylvania? 288. And we lost close to 200. Where I think we're around in the 200 number. I wonder how many of them were politicians. Oh, they don't serve. Uh-huh. You know why? They're allergic to green and red. You know? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, they, uh, These bastards you know, down here want to put an Air Force security veteran. 25 years he gave those country a Vietnam vet in jail. Yeah, and they wonder true. why New Jersey's broke. <laughs> they should put that man in office, not put him in prison. Uh, I love you. They should make him a judge. He's the only one who seems yeah. to get it. Hey, listen, stay, stay, where can somebody, give a number where somebody can make a contribution. Well, they can go online. You can go on to uh, pagwatmemorial.org. That's P A. G W O T Memorial dot org. Timmy, stay on um, with us. T, are you with us? I'm here, Joe. Where were you born? I was born in Saigon, Vietnam. This is a great lady, Bill. Uh, met her several times. Just down to the wall for a visit. It yes, was she was. Her very and Jimmy. Yes. You got a you got a memorial coming up soon, don't you? I do. It is the first 
Vietnam Veterans Memorial in the entire country that has been funded completely by a Vietnamese refugee and her husband and not an organization or a group. And that's going to be dedicated on the first National Vietnam Veterans Day, which is March 29th, and that'll start at 12 p.m. in Barnegat, New Jersey. That is fabulous. Awesome. That is fabulous. Timmy, maybe we can get you to come up to that. Uh, oh, T, this is... Say the word and I'll be there. Yeah. See, this is Bill Denport. Uh, you you going to be sending out directions soon to the event? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, people can put in... Well, it's, it's at Gazebo Park in Barnegat. And if you put in your GPS, 353 North Main Street in Barnegat, that'll take you to the house immediately across the street from the park. And it, it's a small park. It's right there. We're going to have police uh, uh, in, in, in force in um, directing traffic and uh, helping with parking because we're expecting several hundred at least several hundred veterans and then their guests and then everybody else who has been contacting me because they want to to come and show support. I mean, we've got people coming in from the eastern end of Long Island and Virginia, uh, you know, to say the least, and Florida and Missouri. So we've got a lot. It's it's a very unique event, a very unique monument, and uh, it's about time. I mean, Joe, you were talking about the year of thanking a veteran. I think we're getting a head start on that with, uh, I, with this I memorial dedication. You. Yeah, let's start at May... Um March 29th instead of Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. A, 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 a T. Yeah. I guess, I guess if you're, I'm going to say this right and, 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 and uh, not insult anyone, but I guess if you're going to evacuate a country, it pays to have an uncle that has a destroyer, <laughs> doesn't it? It does. It, it helps a little bit. Yeah, my uncle was a captain of uh, a naval minesweeper in Vietnam, and he was able to, you know, smuggle, get everybody on board. We when were, the fall we of Saigon came. So the fall, we, we escaped by the skin of our teeth hours before Saigon officially uh, fell. And Bill and I and, had the honor of meeting your mom and dad and your uncle, that captain yep. the ship. Your, your uncle is a yep. fantastic guy. Um, and I, I told you and, before, I, want, I, I wish he could go out there and do some... Um, um, Speaking in small groups, because he has a real story to tell. It always he paid to have an uncle that has a destroyer in his back pocket. You, you have a story to tell, but you've heard it secondhand. He has the firsthand story of this. Right. Oh. And you know what? We have some other Vietnamese dignitaries coming. We have some other captains of other naval ships as well from Vietnam. And one was a major in the Army who was actually captured and uh, stuck in a communist prison for 10 years afterwards. So we have a lot of great... Uh, guests coming to our event. Oh, so you'll great. be able to meet them too. Yeah, we're oh, really excited about it. Looking forward to really it. Really excited. You, yes. you yes. have so much heart and soul <laughs> of, of, of love for Vietnam, for love for America, for love of the veterans. And, uh, but you know what, Joe? Honestly, seriously, this is common sense to me. And, and it's, it's easy. That is it's way easy. overdue. It's I really easy. wish I, mean, I could say I love the politicians instead of hate them. Because it doesn't get me so fired up and I don't walk the halls in my house at night. I know. And I don't regret what I say because I say the truth. They're all cowards. They didn't serve. Their kids don't serve. They send everybody else's kids off to serve. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. I mean, there are are always exceptions, right? We we get a lot of uh, support from... Like Bob Spice there used to be a lot of exceptions. There yeah, used to be a lot of exceptions. I know. I know. Now we're now our schools are our our schools are teaching. Oh, you don't you don't want your kids going in the service. Why do you, why are they going to service? Why aren't they going to college? I know, and that is just a, a complete disgrace. It really, really is. It's a complete disgrace. But you know, these Vietnam veterans specifically, right? They didn't get their thanks decades ago. And I take the time out to say thank you when somebody holds the door open for me. So this is just common sense to make sure that they realize how much we appreciate everything that they do. T, you know who I blame so. that thanks for? Nobody else who? but the politicians. Yep. They started the wars. They funded the wars. They sent us off the war. They sent Bill. They sent me. They sent Timmy that's on the phone. And guess what? Yep. They didn't go, and then they forgot about us when we came home. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Do you say it was uh, regular Main Street or North Main Street? North Main Street, yeah. North Main Street. So Main Street and State Route 9 are the same road. Uh, and it's right at the corner of West Bay Avenue and North Main Street. Now that's a so state, it's, state street. Did you get a permit from the state to do this? You don't need to. The, state's, uh, the, the street's not going to be closed. So uh, the park is right next to it. Uh, police are just helping with traffic flow and whatnot. So we don't have to worry about, you know, state permits or anything along those lines. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, why I'm saying that, we just had an event um, down um, in Cape May County, and um, the lady running it 
chose not to even involve the state and had it in a, a town out of the way. Uh-huh. Um, and I think that's a disgrace. This, the state has a great facilities um, and great roads. Is this, is this a township or a city park? It is a township park. Yeah. Town park. And so no- we've been working, yeah, we've been working very, very closely with our mayor and township uh, committee members and the police force as well. And they're all so much in support of all of this. And they've just kind of bent over backwards to make sure that we have everything that we need to make sure that everything, you know, goes very smoothly. And, uh, you know, we have a pinning ceremony. Did I mention that? We have a pinning ceremony, too, of every single Vietnam veteran who comes to attend. We're going to have a pinning ceremony with the 50th anniversary commemorative pins that the Exercise Tiger Association has partnered with the uh, Department of Defense. Is anybody going to pin you, T? You've pinned me, Joe. <laughs> and that was my honor. That was Bill and that was our honor that day at the wall. The honor Joe was Wars. all mine. The honor was all mine. To have it done right in front of... You know, your Vietnam Veterans uh, Wall Memorial down in down in Wildwood, that was all mine. I got all teared up, and I, I, I really, really appreciated the honor that you gave me with that. So, yeah, that, that was really memorable. You still owe us some uh, pictures for that. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'll, uh, I'll get them to you for sure, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, we're just appreciative that you came uh, uh, condemned the visit. Um, you know, you get a feeling, uh, um, and there's no doubt your heart is... Um, um, uh, in, in um, this country, but your uh, your really your, your memories, the, the memories you're learning from your uh, relatives are, are in Vietnam as they should be. Um, mm-hmm. You've got a great family uh, um, who had to give up their uh, their way of life in their country, um, but mm-hmm. I hope they found a, um, a very nice place to live here. And, and, oh, and, absolutely! And Timmy, you with us? I'm still here, Johnny. Yep. We owe our veterans a second chance and a third chance when they come home, don't we? Absolutely. I mean, I guarantee you it's going to cost the county of Cape May 30, 40,000 before they realize they should be thanking this guy, this Air Force veteran. Know what he said to me? He said, Joe, I'll come. I'll come to South Jersey. I'll, I'll be the security for all the schools. Nobody will get in their schools. We're doing a show on POW MIAs, I believe, next week. Chick said to me, Joe, six years in the Air Force. I went to Vietnam in different parts of the country where we had down pilots supervising the security of the details of the people from JPAC for the for the uh, uh, the missing POW MIAs that the politicians forgot about us. I mentioned that Marsha Ford just came back from Hanoi and she's going back again. He said, tell her I'll go over. I'll lead her security team. So we're going to take a guy that goes to Hanoi looking for, for missing veterans. He wants to go back again into a communist country. North Vietnam is still communist. When you agree, T? Uh, all, all of Vietnam is disgusting. All of it, yeah. I don't, yeah. I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to say it about the South, but yes, it is. He's willing to go over there, and yet he comes to Cape May County, and we put his ass in jail? I don't see any of these prosecutors in Cape May County. I don't see them volunteering to go over there and look for the ones that haven't come home yet. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And for that female judge to turn around and berate this guy because he wore his uniform is a disgrace. She should be disbarred as far as I'm concerned. So give us the time again, um, T. It's 12 to... It's, yep, it starts at 12 noon. So that, that's for the monument uh, dedication portion. And then we're expecting it'll be over... Pro- the monument dedication will probably be over around 1 or 1.30, depending on how long-winded the speakers get. And uh, after that, immediately following the ceremony, we're going to have a celebration at the Barnegat American Legion, where there are going to be some light refreshments and snacks served, and uh, the pending ceremony of all of the Vietnam veterans there. Well, that's great. Um, yeah, and take it from me, um, uh, short speeches. Uh, you, I'm sure you've studied Abraham Lincoln and his speech. <laughs> <laughs> we made a mistake when we dedicated it. Uh, it wasn't a mistake because we had to get everybody on, but um, it lasted almost two and a half hours when we dedicated it to our wall. Um, and you kind of lose the crowds, but we had about 7,000 people there. And I think it was Lincoln yeah. that turned around and said, <laughs> you're going to judge your next generation of freedom by how you take care of the veterans of this generation. T and Timmy, stay on with us. We are going to try and bring up Major Ed, Iraq veteran, and he's the founder of an organization in Oklahoma. Ed, you with us? I am with you. What a great day to be an American. Major Ed, how you doing, my friend? 
You I are am outstanding. We only have a couple minutes, and we're going to have you back on again because your story is too great. But you are the founder of Folds of Honor. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm one of the. I'm the co-founder, and the foundation is about providing the spouses and children of a father and wounded educational scholarship. Ed, how many? How many? How much money have you raised? How long has your organization been around? Well, we've been around about ten years. Started by Major Dan Rooney, who's an F-16 fighter pilot. We've awarded over sixteen thousand scholarships, and our motto is honoring the sacrifice, educating the legacy. We never leave a family behind on the field of battle. So help us God. And the biggest thing that we do is we always honor and welcome home our Vietnam veterans. And that's where we learn that, you know what, organizations like Folds of Honor are here to make a difference in the lives of those that have served. What a great, Bill, isn't that a great name, Folds it's, of Honor? It, it is. Spell that for us. F-O-L-D-S of Honor. Yeah. He's a Marine. You know, Ed, Ed, he's a Marine, so we got to go slow. <laughs> oh, I love the Marines. Oh, I'm sorry, Timmy. All but Timmy. No. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I love it. You're you also that, the author of a book, correct? I am called Warriors for Freedom. And in my book, I actually talk about what the Folds of Honor name means. And it means the 13 folds of the flag. And every fold has a significant message behind it. And I think the most important thing we can say is for our young people and our veterans out there, and for everyone to know, that we should know what those 13 folds really mean and what they're all about. And I want to let everyone know a little bit briefly about you. My name is Major Ed Polito, U.S. Army retired. I am the Senior Vice President of Folds of Honor and founder of Warriors for Freedom. On August 17, 2004, I was hit by an improvisive Explosive device, improvised, I can't read Improvise. Improvised explosive device, an IED on road, on a our roadside bomb in Iraq that would change my life forever. As I laid on the 128 degree heat, one thing was clear. As members of the armed forces of the United States of America, we understand that it is our patriotic duty to never leave a fallen comrade behind on the fields of battle. Timmy Wynn doesn't leave veterans behind. Major Ed doesn't leave veterans behind. It's our politicians in New Jersey, starting at the Capitol, that are failing our veterans in New Jersey, and that's why we're in last place. We're major. We're trying to get we're trying to get a a program started here this Memorial Day. New Jersey's the last place taking care of our veterans. They're horrible. Nobody's even the the forty ninth place to us. They're not even close. They're so far ahead of us. We want to name wow. Memorial Day and for the till Memorial Day of of twenty nineteen. Have it the year of the vet in New Jersey. Do you think that'll start to get us out of sub recognition now to last place? Well, I think that the recognition comes from what you and this show bring to the, the general public. It's an educational process of letting people know how important it is that our veterans are honored, but more importantly, are given the tools, the resources, the information, and not a hand out, but a hand up. And here, we're not here to take anything from anyone. But at the end of the day, when you sign on the dotted line and you take the oath of office to defend the greatest nation in the world, it is about God, country, family, but it is also about protecting the freedoms of the American people. And that's what we're all about. That's why our... Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Major Ed, wait a minute. So people, somebody's yeah. going to stop me tomorrow outside church, and they're going to say, this Major Ed guy, what's he know about, about a veteran? Sir, have you ever been to Afghanistan? You know what? I've been to those dark places over there, and uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, and certainly I've been all over the world. And How long have you it. served, sir? I served for 20 years in a day and served the greatest nation in the world and retired because I had an improvised explosive device, a roadside bomb, that would lead to the amputation of my leg. Hey, Timmy. Yeah. Would you have any trouble going to war with Major Ed? Not at all. I'll go tomorrow with him. <laughs> and we would go with you. Absolutely. We well, would. I love you guys. I love your spirit. I love what you bring out. And I'm, congratulations on your show and how important it is get the word out, and, and you make things happen for the American people. Ma Major Ed, do you have veterans courts out there in Oklahoma? We do. You know what? And we're working hard and diligently to fund those to make sure that our veterans are getting every resource possible. Uh, that is a big problem, and we got to make it happen, and we got to cope the suicide rate as well. I had a judge tell me this morning that, well, we shouldn't give special treatment to veterans. Why? They give us a roof of freedom. You, you got injured. You got hit with a bomb. 
I wonder yeah. how many of them would have the guts to walk down a road in Fallujah. Yo, wow. Tulsa, Tulsa had one of the first um, veterans courts in the country. Did they tell me? Uh, good. Yeah, a good friend of mine, a Marine by the name Stacy Hester out there is a uh, He's a real all star, and he uh, he advocates for uh, veterans courts all over the country. So Guys, I'm they, being they're t- definitely rocking and rolling out there with veterans. Eddie, courts. you got to get back on the show. And Timmy, you'll be back going along with T. We got to go off the air. I'm being told. We love you guys. You know, politicians step to the plate. It's never too late. Oh, yeah. It's never too late to wear red on Friday. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. I'm playing.